prepare yourself to get rich with vengeance or go to Valhalla trying. Iron Tides. So this is a survival roguelite game with turn-based gameplay. Which usually, you know what, usually I don't like that sort of stuff. I like turn-based, thinking ahead, I'm not so good at. Thinking in general, yeah, you not don't so really good. like those sort of strategy games. Not particularly, but this one stood out as something different. I find that it was quite easy to learn how it will be given four characters that you can control. Mm. So you found the difficulty that learning curve was actually like pretty easy to master, yeah. like jump into? Yeah, like you sort of trial it's trial and error. So they've all got skills, you've got skill points. You're able to see how they all interact with each other because they all complement each other really well. Mm. So in Iron Tides, you have a main map which you traverse and you encounter enemies and locations. Uh, you navigate using basically up, down, left, right, and the good thing is that bears out in combat as well. So there's no diagonal movement, which I remember you were saying you actually quite like that. Yeah, yeah, it's good to know what you can and can't do. Diagonal feels a bit cheaty because it feels like you can cut through a bit faster. Yeah, it kind of feels like you're taking two moves. Yeah. And a lot of games um, actually do count that as two moves or they have provisions for that. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this, this actually, it, it's simple when it works well. Yeah. So essentially the main bulk of the game is encountering battles. Mm -hmm. And that's really where I feel the game's been fleshed out at this point. Yeah, definitely. So I feel like we're still playing an alpha build pre-Kickstarter. So there's a lot of things that don't exist yet. And we've already spoken to the developers and they've sort of assured us of a few things that are going to be added to the game. So right now, I guess we'll only talk about what we've seen. Um, and then we'll talk about what they're going to add later on. So in Iron Tides, when you get into a battle, uh, basically you have your four characters, you get to choose their placement. Um, the main component of how you actually play through your turns um, is really based around fury. So the way it works is you've got three fury points per turn and each one of your abilities takes up fury and you can only use them once per turn. Right. So like one might be one fury, one might be two fury and then you're done. That's it. You done. That's it. But if you kill an enemy you get one fury. Which makes sense because you're a viking you're just like ah, what I? Yeah I actually so. like it because it's a mechanic that kind of bears out how a Viking would fight. Mm. So they're fighting through, they see that they've like had a victory and it, it like encourages them to do that last little bit before they have to like sacrifice their, their yeah, turn. Yeah, exactly. It's like it really, is, it makes them want to kill more. They just yeah. love it, they just love killing. Vikings it's, are just lovely people. Yeah, lovely, <laughs> lovely people. <laughs> Don't let them visit your village though, because you will be dead. So with the four Vikings, you've got four roughly different classes. So you've got a Vanguard, which is pretty much a tank. You know, it can take a lot of damage, can dish out a bit and can also help support other characters by giving them one fury. Which yeah, is I, kinda, cool. I kinda feel like he's like the captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much the leader. Yeah. You can just shove him into battle and watch him do what he does. Yeah. So then you've also got an archer, so obviously long distance sort of support from afar. Yeah, quite powerful actually. Yeah, it's yeah. got uh, some pretty sweet abilities like kill shot, so if someone's already damaged, you can fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, you've also got a, uh, a spearwoman, a Valkyrie, I'm pretty sure it is. And she's Blue Valkyrie has gained a level. <laughs> or died, depending how shit you are. <laughs> yeah. so, so she jumps, she literally jumps into battle, which is pretty sweet. So mm. you sort of like, she's a little bit of a tricky one. She can jump behind enemy lines, get it from rear, which does more damage. So it's also quite tactical in that. Mm. And I noticed the way that her fury is being laid out because you get three fury per turn. And she can actually generally, if she doesn't do a tactical jump, she can do two attacks per turn. Yeah. Which is quite Or you cool. can jump her in back and then do, and then do it like attack. a backstab. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, which is pretty sweet. And the fourth one is, an axe roll, like a berserker sort of a dude. Yeah, he's cool. He has a sweet beard and he can throw his axe like magic. Okay. Um, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, it, they all, like I said before, they all complement each other really well. They all make up for each other's weaknesses. And it's quite tactical about how you lay them out. You know, send a vanguard in, get the tricky spear lady to jump behind, get mm. the archer from afar. And you know, your, your berserker, he literally just goes berserk and throws axes at people. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What I like about this game, so graphics are cool, mm. cell shading, like not too much going on. Do you know what it reminds me of? What? Warcraft 3. A little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah like not yeah. too much going on, sort of like, not, I don't know, not non-detailed. It's sort of like cell shaded, but still with a bit of textures. Yeah, 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 that's right. Very Warcraft 3, that was the sort of feeling I had. A bit of World of Warcraft as well, like sort of like a more modernized version of it. Mm. And I felt like it would scale really well with resolution as well. So, I don't know, it was just, it, was, it, was, it felt familiar. Yeah, yeah. Also yeah. the layout of the bodies, like like larger heads, smaller bodies. Yeah. Thing, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. 
Water was nice. Uh, I also like the idea of you have cannons on some of the battles, on mm. some of the ships. Oh yeah, the first time that happened. <laughs> oh, tell us how'd, about you, it. how'd you go? I wrecked it. I got my. Oh, did you? Yeah, I got my Valkyrie to swoop in and like stab it in the back. Oh really? So that was pretty good. But uh, I realized that I had to focus on it. Like I didn't know how powerful it was until it shot the first time, and like almost like one shot my archer. And I was like, oh crap. Yes. Um, but that was cool. Like that was a nice, if the game is going to progress down that path where there's unexpected enemies. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to because I did feel that with the alpha, um, I sort of knew the sort of enemies I was going to face. So yeah. I, I had like an assumed setup mm -hmm. for every battle. Um, yeah, you, know, you sort of expected what was coming next. Yeah, yeah, but I know that that's going to change as I move forward. But yeah, but all something that surprised me was waves. Yeah, not in the ocean. I was going to say that happens. <laughs> yeah, but. So I remember there was one battle I was just sort of like wrecking bitches everywhere and yeah. I was like, oh, I've got this, whatever. And the next thing I know, five guys dropped down from the roof. Yeah, but why? The first time that happened was kind of cool, yeah? We're on a boat where you just like hanging up there watching the battle like, Did oh, you Did you not guys. notice it? Like not notice the countdown? I had no idea. Yes, on the top right there's a countdown. But I, I, didn't no notice, I didn't notice it either for the first time it happened and then I was definitely paying attention to it. <laughs> yeah. Because um, you sort of like, oh, I can play it really safe. And then it, these enemies dropped in, I'm like, oh, if I killed the first guys fast enough, I didn't have to attack the other Yeah, enemy. exactly, right. You sort of got to like, plan ahead for it and know like, what, how you're going to kill these guys within a certain amount of turns. Yeah, so that's, that's a cool mechanic because you can have everything set up and then it could basically, you don't know where those guys are going to drop. So that, that, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, exactly right. That's another element to the game. Definitely. Yeah. I also really like the world map, the way it's done, the way it feels, and also that there's food, so that's what limits you from just exploring to the heart's content. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Like, you can't just randomly go around. You kind of have to force yourself into battles and situations to restock your supplies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so yeah. it rewards you for killing guys, which is what anyone really wants. Yeah, so I think overall, like, the, the main mechanics are in place. And so leading up to the Kickstarter, I think that, you know, we've got a good taste of what the game's going to be. Um, but obviously, there's going to be so much more once it actually releases. So it's, it's kind of a cool little little snippet of what we're getting. Yeah, like I really, I'm really enjoying what we've got so far, so I can't wait to see what else happens from mm. here. It's just gonna get better. So what I wanna see in the final product? I wanna see more Vikings, which we know we're getting. Mm. I wanna see more variety in tactics, which they're gonna be doing with um, different maps. I think I saw on yeah. some photos. And there was a really cool bridge, and uh, there was like, there was a bridge, there's a space and a bridge, so you know, you use your Valkyrie to jump on one to the other. It was funny because when I was playing the game, I was thinking to myself that'd be really cool if there was levels that had that sort of divide and then you could use that character to be even more tactful. Um, it's cool that they've already thought of that and that's that's already coming. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I want to see, there's gonna be more maps with the actual ocean itself. Yep, I saw different levels in some of their uh, concept art and some of the trailers. So there'll be like different actual backgrounds and sizes of areas and battlefields and that sort of stuff. So the game's already going to be expanding down that sort of path, which is it's just what you would want in the game. Mm. Yeah, which is good. So that's already happening. What would the ideal version of this be for you? I just thought to myself, there's little islands. There are islands that you can explore yeah. and sort of search and do stuff with. I'd like to see some sort of like multi-battle area, like say for example, there's a fort or something. Yeah. And there'd be like three consecutive battles and you can try and- Oh, okay. So like you fight one battle and like the, your health persists for the next battle? Yeah. Like That'd be cool. To the next one. Like yeah. a battle royale style sort of thing. Yeah, exactly right. So you can okay. risk getting to the end and getting a really good reward That's or cool. losing quite a few people. So. Right. And so if you get all the way to the end, you get the treasure or- Yeah. Right. So that'd be pretty sweet. I don't know if that's sort of planned for the future, but I'd like oh, to I quite like that, that as a concept, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to make sure that you know what you're doing and that you're confident that your guys will be able to survive. Or you can just like spend your time leveling up, you know, earning food and making sure that you can kill the enemies and then, you know, going forward. Or actually, that, that reminds me of something we were talking about off camera. Um, the idea that you could actually have battles on the ships, as in you could have your ship coming in, um, you could like try and board their ship and then basically you're fighting over two oh, ships. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so instead of just when you start a battle, you're already on their ship, you could actually be there and you take turns getting across the other person's ship and maybe dismantling their cannons and you get to fire your own cannons and that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. That, right. that could be actually be pretty, sweet. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And it'd give you an incentive to spend experience or money or whatever it is on upgrading your own ship's defenses for if someone invades your ship. Yeah, yeah. Actually, That's how cool sick. would that be if someone invades your ship but you've got your cannons and stuff set up so you can actually have a higher level battle because you've already got stuff there so you can be defensive. Yeah. Or like you can gain glory by pretty much just chasing away enemies just by scaring them off. They'd see your ship and be like, no, oh, right, I can't see you walking you like, like, damn, come yeah. by me. And they're like, they're like whoa, 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 sorry guys. Uh, 
Here's some cash, see you later. Actually, that would be kind of cool because that kind of bears out what the Vikings kind of were to uh, a lot of people by the end of their reign. Um, people were sort of genuinely fearful of them. Oh yeah, they had a fear, like fearsome reputation. So mm. yeah, they, that could That could actually play well. into yeah. the game quite well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know how it would work as a gaming mechanic, but as a storytelling mechanic, that would actually be really cool. Yeah, and it would save you time as well because if you're a high level and there's low level enemies, instead of wasting your time It's like, an, up, like a presumptive victory. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. You may actually, not have as that, much experience, but yeah. Because I know you haven't played a lot of turn-based games, so in games like Might and Magic and things like that, that mm. actually is a mechanic. All right. Um, so you can sort of auto roll a battle because it knows you're going to win. Gotcha. And you might take some casualties, but it's sort of, it just automatically resolves that battle. It for you, yeah. Because you know that it's, it's sort of like, of course I'm going to win this. Um, yeah, sort like of why I've spent time on it, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's cool, yeah. yeah. So this game has a much lower learning curve. That's for sure. It was easy to learn and pretty easy to master. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, well there's only four people that you can play as just yeah. being the demo at the moment, but uh, I believe there's another two heroes planned for the future. Yeah, uh, yeah so the developers, we actually spoke with um, the people making Iron Tides and they said that they want the characters to have about seven abilities, at the moment they have four, and they want them to be about six characters, at the moment they have also four. Yeah. So that's going to create a lot of variation in the gameplay and I'm hoping that that does actually add a bit of difficulty. Oh, uh, it's sure. kind of good that you jumped in now to play because I feel like in the finished game it'd be harder for you to jump in and play. Yeah, because I always find that it can be a lot on you. Like you're sort of learning out all the moves and you, especially with, since it's roguelite, mm. it's permadeath. Yeah. So I am one of those people when I play games, I'm a hoarder. Yes, I'm a is. hoarder of <laughs> ammo, food and people. You give him so. a gun with two bullets and he'll keep the two bullets and throw the gun, pick up the gun, <laughs> throw it again and just that's how we play the game. Pretty much, I'll almost <laughs> die due to just going to melee everyone. <laughs> At the end of the game, I'll have a gun and two bullets and be like, mm, should have used them at some point. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. It's very frustrating. Yeah, I remember, what was that old game we used to play? Um, Medal of Honor? Yes. Back in the day. They are like one of the very first games where you could actually shoot people's limbs off. Oh no, Soldier of Fortune Soldier of Fortune 2. Yeah. And that was the game where that you would play that so conservatively. And this was back in the day where like, we could only afford like one computer. Um, we'd come around and play on each other's like CRT screens. Oh yeah. That game was actually awesome, but you would play that the way that it would just... Oh my god, I was like, <laughs> shoot him, what are you doing? He's like, no, I've only got five bullets. I'm like, shoot him, you've got five bullets! Oh my god. I need them for later. It was so good. I do. Now if you want to try this game out for yourself, you can. Yeah. Uh, just check out the description, we've got a link down to the demo. Also, if you want to follow progress on this game, you can follow these guys at, at Irontide on Twitter. So give them a check out if you want to see what's going on. And remember guys, the Kickstarter launches on the 28th of September. We're going to be backing Iron Tides, and we, we hope you do as well. So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time on the Game Stormers. See ya. Let me tell you little munchkins what I like about Iron Tides. I like the graphics. Very chunky. <laughs> I like the water. Very water. <laughs> What very else did I like about the game, Barry? I'll tell, tell you. More. I'll tell you, I like how the characters, they complement each other. You're looking very good, little Barry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, 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 very, very nice. So kind. The characters, the tags, they complement each other as well. They don't just complement each other with the compliments. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Down that lip. Yeah. Happy? Yes, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't no, hurt me. <laughs> 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 no, please. <laughs> <laughs>